do loading a CSV into a Jupyter Notebook using Python 3. So you can see up here I've got Python 3 as my kernel. I'm using Jupyter Lab. So on the left hand side I have a uh, folder navigator here of what I want to see. I'm going to start out with just look, reviewing the sample CSV. So if I look at that CSV uh, in an editor, so I'll open that with an editor. This is what my CSV looks like as a text file. So I'm using the Jupyter text editor to see what the contents of my CSV is. If I double click on that sample CSV, Jupyter recognizes it as a CSV and then adds some extra sort of formatting to make it prettier. And you lose the fact that there's some commas there that it's being parsed. So the sample CSV is already um, parsing using the commas as a delimiter. Okay, let's see how we can load that into uh, a Jupyter Notebook. So the first way that we can do that is we can write our own uh, file parser. So this is sort of the, the most fundamental method in, in Python of doing it. We're not using any libraries and we're not, um, we're just starting from scratch. So to do that, we have our file name, sample.csv, and we're going to use uh, an open statement here to say I want to open this file. And then the R here is for read-only access. So it's, we're just reading it from disk. Then there's this conditional statement called with. So I'm going to open this file. And I'm going to have this file handle variable called my file. So this first line opens the file and gives back a file handle as long as you're indented four spaces. So we're here now within this conditional statement. Now we can have access to that file handle. The utility of using a with statement is that once you leave this, we're now, uh, so if I were to be out here with my cursor, after we leave that with statement indentation, the file handle is automatically closed. So that's sort of the, the usefulness of a with statement. Okay, the second line, we're just using a for statement uh, to iterate over a variable called line. And we're going to save the output. And we're looking at all the things in my file. So we're accessing the contents of the file as a loop, and we're going to get every line back from that file. Now the, the variable name here is irrelevant. Just as this variable is also irrelevant, you could call it cat or dog or line, whatever you're going to call it. I try and use somewhat descriptive file names, but in my case, they're not too creative. You'll notice those variables are black, meaning they're um, not reserved keywords, whereas the the dark, bold, green syntax highlighting in Jupyter indicates a reserved keyword. OK, so now we've got our file. We're going to loop over every element. And then we can print each line. So let's remove that strip and just see what happens here. So I'm going to run this cell. And what happens is Python reads in the line. And the line includes a line break. So there's a, a carriage return or a new line character. So that's what happens when we just print the line as it is in the file. That's not really what we intended. We want to like remove the trailing new line character. And so to do that, we're going to include this strip command. Now when we run it, it's removed the new line. And so it's printing the first line. And then it prints the second line. And then it prints the third line. So that sort of looks like what we had in the file in the, in the first place. It's not super useful in the sense of it's just a string and another string and another string. You haven't actually separated out the columns, but at least we've gotten to the point where we can reproduce the CSV content in Python. Okay, as I sort of warn here, this is not a great way of handling CSVs because CSVs are very messy and so there's lots of things to think about with CSVs that writing our own parser is just not a good investment. This has been done many times before and so therefore we should think about where else could we uh, find someone else's work and leverage that in a library? Right. Uh, so before we get to any libraries, I'll just kind of look at this edge case here of what happens if rather than just printing a line, we're going to actually split on the comma. And we can do that. And so now we get back a list rather than the, the, the full line. So this is the list of elements. But again, you sort of see that we've run into this problem of there are spaces after every comma. 
So that was sort of like visually intuitive here that this is an element and there's a space there, but we don't have to worry about that. But Python doesn't realize that those spaces are, are irrelevant. So um, that's not really what we intended to get back from this list, even though it did split out the list appropriately. The other uh, worrisome feature here is that there's a list with an empty character in it, which is probably just a carriage return that was trailing at the end of the C. So there's a, a new line here that wasn't visible. But when we parsed all the lines, then it became visible. OK, so again, as I sort of alluded to, rather than relying on our own ability to read the file and catch all the bugs, we could just use someone else's work. So here I'm going to import this CSV library. How did I know that existed? Well, I didn't. I had to sort of guess, would someone else have done this before? And then think of, well, OK, I could search for the internet and say, how to parse CSV files in Python. And eventually, I would find this library. So the use here is pretty similar to opening the file um, in the first line that we had before. But this time, we're going to have um, a call to the library. And again, we have to read about the documentation on that library to see that there is a thing called the reader, which is a, a function in the CSV library. And it takes in the, uh, the my file command. As we saw before, there are spaces. So let's um, see what happens if I don't include that. So again, there's these spaces. And rather than trying to like, do that manually, the person who developed the CSV library gave us a special keyword in it, skip initial space true. And that allows us to uh, avoid the, the spaces at the beginning of the string. So it returns this variable called reader, and then reader happens to be a list that we can iterate over and return every row. So this is closer to what we want. You'll notice there's still uh, that trailing line break at the bottom because our file had uh, a trailing line in it. So CSV library is better, um, and it has some features that might be useful, but it's not the be all end all. It's, it's got back a list of elements, and we can iterate through the rows. So this is usually a, a reasonable place to start unless there's a better library. All right. So in the course that I'm teaching, Pandas is a very standard library that we'll be using almost everywhere because a lot of data is in tab tabular format. So here I'm just advertising that Pandas exist and you should learn it. So Pandas is a little bit different than what we were doing before with the with open statement. Here we're just going to pass the file name to a function called read CSV, and that's in the module. So that's again in the documentation. We have to say like, how do we read a CSV in Pandas, and then we'd find the read CSV command. So the output of that, I'm going to save it to a variable, and then I'm going to see what does the contents of that variable look like. All right, this. Uh, table is specially formatted, so we didn't have to do anything. That's sort of a feature of pandas that returns this pretty table. And you'll see that it indexes the rows here, 0, 1, 2, 3, and recognizes the first row as a header. So that's pretty neat. That seems pretty advantageous because we didn't have to parse anything or tell it what the delimiter was. It sort of guessed that it was a comma. And then we can ask, like, you know, what are the certain features of this data frame? Like, what is its shape? And it will return that there's four rows and four columns. So that's a little different because it has already parsed the fact that this first row was the headers. And so it's not including that first row in the shape of the data frame. So at this point, that is the core feature that we were looking for. Um, as far as getting from a CSV into a Python data structure. We're going to use pandas library to do that. All right. So if we had another, this is going off on a little bit of a tangent now. I'll show a little bit of extra. So I'm going to look at another file that was pipe separated. So let's look at that. So we'll look at that in an editor. So here it's got a a CS, it's still a CSV, but because some of the fields had commas in them, we switched over to using a bar as a delimiter. 
So let's see if the, yeah, so if we open this in the CSV editor in Jupyter and have the delimiter of comma, it sort of like isn't very work, working very well. But they recognize that pipes are so common that they allow it as one of the four options. So here when I split this CSV delimiter as a pipe, then the table looks more like we expected. So let's see if we can do that with this uh, CSV library that we already have loaded. We can specify another delimiter. So let's see what happens. So that's the CSV. You'll notice it didn't split on the comma there in the elements. So this is being treated as one string, even though it has a comma in it. That's pretty much what we're looking for. And then the last example that I'll show is sort of like an outlier case that you see pretty often is the sample CSV with quotes. So let's see what that looks like. So here I have my CSV separated by commas as my delimiter, and I have double quotes around some of them where there are quotes in the element. And so there, I could have used pipes as a delimiter and not used quotes, but this is another option for a similar problem. So let's see what that looks like. So again, using the CSV library, um, and telling it that we are going to skip the space and use a code character, um, we got back the data structure that we're interested in. So sort of like a foreshadowing, you can do the same sort of like exception handling with pandas as far as like whether you use what delimiter and whether there are quotes present. Um, sometimes it will automatically detect these features and sometimes you'll have to explicitly tell pandas what to do.